You guys ever been so poor you had to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches using hot dog buns? And no peanut butter and jelly? My mama used to call those wish sandwiches. As if she wished dad didn't suck at gambling. I've been doing comedy for a while, man. Weird shit happens when you do comedy. Last week, right before the show, a headliner came up to me. He's like, bro, afterwards, can you help me score with some ecstasy and escorts? <laughs> Gotta be honest with you, man. I'm a mid-level comic in the fourth-rated market. Best I can do is Benadryl and back rubs. <laughs> so we did. Man, we got relaxed. We took naps. We went down to the Arboretum, we didn't sneeze once. <laughs> if you guys don't know what the Arboretum is, it's like a Bucky's but with a shit ton of flowers. <laughs> if you don't know what a Bucky's is, it's like a Walmart but with a shit ton of crosses. <laughs> it's weird, dude. It's really weird. But what are they doing? Are they trying to attract goth kids but scare away vampires? <laughs> It's the same thing, Bucky, so they're the same thing. Stop it. I live in a part of Dallas called Fair Park. Everyone's like, why is he shot? What's wrong with him? What's... Does he not know he's white? What is wrong with him? What's going on? It's very sketchy, very affordable. My wife and I were walking our dogs. Scratch that, I'm white, I forgot. My wife and I were walking our rescues. White people, right? So annoying. As we were, a homeless guy came up and took his shit right in front of us. And my wife got pissed. She's like, hey, aren't you going to yell at him? I was like, yeah, baby, I got this. I mean, man, you woman, I protect your honor. Like, sir, yeah, you, hey, thanks for keeping our rent low. <laughs> Appreciate that. So, matter of fact, I'm going to give you this fiber bar. It's right here. There you go, sir. It's when you're done with this, why don't you head on down to Deep Ellum and ungentrify that place. Thank you so much. <laughs> My wife's a lot younger than I am, a lot younger, and uh, keeps me in shape, man. It does. Every time I come home, I run around the house and turn off all the lights she's left on. <laughs> it's good cardio. <laughs> Bro, just don't get a second story house. It sucks. <laughs> It's cool though, man. It's good. She's uh, it's a weird things happen though when you have a big age difference. Our first night we were making out and I was trying to be all sexy. I was like, hey, who's your daddy? And she's like, well, technically you could be. <laughs> Maybe you know him. He might be your foreman. I don't know. <laughs> so I tried to change it up. I was like, that's cool. I was like, hey, say my name. She's like, I forgot. Kick ass. <laughs> Great. And here's the thing, when we first started dating, I never tried to act young around her. Like, I didn't show up on our first date, like, riding a hoverboard, wearing a man bun, and being like, what's up, girl? You wanna go see my boy T-Bone spin some sick vinyl over at the Rustic? I was honest with her. I was like, listen, girl, I still own a Blockbuster card. I own a TV, DVD, VCR combo. I call it my triple threat. Anytime I get pissed off, I have a sudden urge to write a handwritten letter. That's some old person shit right there. I'll show you. I'll use good penmanship. Does it ever work? Is the CEO ever sitting around the office like, well, guys, we better stop polluting the environment. Why is that boss? We got ourselves a handwritten letter. Who does it say? I don't know. It's in cursive. I like saying that word cursive, and the millennials are like, what's the cursive? What is, what is that? I love, I love the millennials. I know a lot of old people shit on you guys, but I love you guys. You guys are great. You're gonna save the world. You guys know how to code. Like, that is some serious smart shit. I'm a Gen Xer. All I can do is make a backpack out of used diapers from Lollapalooza. That's it. That's all I can do. But millennials, we gotta talk, man. You guys get way too butt hurt, way too fucking easy. Seriously, I was with this uh, millennial at work, she just got a haircut. So I said, oh, I like your haircut, it's very pretty. And she was like, excuse me? Do you think because I'm pretty, I have value now? I have worth? And I was like, well, technically studies have shown when you're prettier, you do make more money. And let's be clear, I never said you were pretty, I said your fucking haircut was. <laughs> now go to your safe space and get the fuck out of here. 
with my wife, one of the things I'm afraid, afraid about is because of big age difference, I'm afraid of dying first. And, and then I started reading this up, like if couples are together for more than 40 years and the man dies first, the woman will travel the world, open up a yoga studio, and write a best-selling novel on the migration habits of monarch butterflies. <laughs> if the woman dies first, the guy will die within six months. <laughs> Usually naked, in the kitchen, face down in a pile of bacon grease, with some kind of cryptic message saying, I don't know how Uber Eats works. <laughs> so don't die. You guys ever been mistaken for working in a place you do not work at? Yes. You know, if you're at Target and you're wearing red? Yes. Or you're at Walgreens and you look sad? Yes. Look around, anyone not laughing, they work at Walgreens. I was at Walgreens looking sad, and this little old white lady came up to me. She's like, hey, you work here? I was like, no, ma'am, I don't. I wish I did, though, because I'm pretty sure the conversation between you and that Walgreens employee, all oh, that shit's going to be magical. <laughs> She's like, well, God damn it, how the hell do I get your service around here? Well, ma'am, why don't you just continue cussing really loud and see what happens? And she did. But she used old white lady cuss words. Dagnabbit. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy. And the mother load of all old white lady cuss words. Let me talk to the manager. Oh fuck. Oh shit. Oh. It worked. You showed up. Almost from a different store. It worked. Anyone here ever work a mall job before? No judgment. I used to work a mall job. Yes. What is the one thing you do 15 minutes before closing time? You bring down the gate about halfway down. Just halfway down, just give everyone a heads up. And there's always that one asshole coming in doing the limbo. Hey, hey, you guys about to close? You guys closing? Bro, it's 8.45 on a Tuesday night. You're in Burleson, Texas at a hot topic. Yeah, we're about to close. You go into give up mode, you're just like, listen man, all the chain wallets are 100% off, just go, just get out. Just get out. I had that attitude happen to me once, but it was a cop. What had happened was I had gone to a KISS concert, sat in the front row, I got covered in fake blood. Driving home drunk, a cop pulls me over. Shines a flashlight in the car, sees me covered in what he thinks is real blood, then says this, um, yeah, don't do that again. And let me go. <laughs> Holy shit! Bro, you just gave me a murder warning. <laughs> he didn't see a serial killer, all he saw was paperwork. <laughs> My mom lives in West Palm Beach, Florida. I live in Dallas, Texas. So anytime anything remotely bad happens in Texas, anywhere in Texas, she calls up freaking out. Oh honey, I heard there was a shooting. In El Paso. Are you okay? Well, shit, unless they're shooting with nuclear weapons. I'm fine. She saw me do that bit once and got pissed. This is how I know. Last year we had some horrible shootings in downtown Dallas. I live by downtown Dallas. That bitch didn't call me for two weeks. She hates that I do comedy, she gets really worried. She called up one time, she says, Honey, I heard on CNN that some of these comedy clubs, they pay their comics with drugs. <laughs> Can you book me? <laughs> I'll give you 10%. <laughs> she loves to watch movies, and then she gives me reviews of those films, whether I want to hear them or not. So one time she got really upset at this movie. She's like, Honey, don't you dare watch this movie called The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> One of the very first scenes were blowing cocaine up this woman's bottom. I don't understand how that works. And I was like, Mom, I gotta go. Where are you going? To a blockbuster. I know they're all closed, but I will fucking open one up. I was on iTunes last night and I purchased that song Cocaine by Eric Clapton. When I did, a message from iTunes popped up and it said, Are you sure you want to spend 99 cents on cocaine? I've never been so sure of anything in my life. 
I joke about cocaine, guys. I used to do it. I don't anymore. I haven't done coke in six or seven hours. <laughs> I had a bad experience, man. I was at this club in Deep Bellum called Hey Dares. It's in the bathroom. Really shitty bathroom. <laughs> it's really awful. I love your tepid applause, man. Thank you so much. Yes. So I'm in there, and I decided it'd be a good idea to store me some cocaine out of a little baggie using a straw I've been drinking with all night. It's a cokehead laugh right there. <laughs> he, right? he was like, oh, dude, you're going to get clogged in the straw. That's what happened, right? By the way, talk to me after the show. I started to panic. I started to freak out. I was like, wait a second, guys. I'm smart. I can figure this out. I have an online degree in marketing. University of Phoenix. So I decided to blow through the straw whilst it was still in the bag. <laughs> oh shit, now it's Christmas time for strippers. Cocaine's falling out of the sky. I'm trying to funnel this shit into my nose before it hits that nasty bathroom floor. And let me tell you something, eight o'clock show, Dallas Hyenas, Mockingbird Station. I don't know if you guys ever tried to snort cocaine. As it's falling out of the sky, it's difficult, not impossible. <laughs> I still got high, you know why? I'm not a quitter, I'm a phoenix. <laughs> sort of mask. We're not, we're not a real school. We're not. So we have a lot of couples here tonight. I think that's kick ass. You can tell you guys are dating, you're touching each other. It's awesome. You can tell you're married because you're not. That's funny. That's, funny. that's your future. That's what happens. That's what happens. I was, uh, when I first started dating uh, my wife, I noticed she was doing this, this little trick that sometimes the ladies, gentlemen, you might notice when you first start dating a girl, will kind of ask you those little questions. They'll be like, so baby, I was just wondering about something. <laughs> What's your mom's maiden name? What was the name of your first pet? <laughs> What are your favorite four digits? Ah, uh, 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 uh. bitch, you're trying to get in my phone. <laughs> this dude's changing his passcode right now. He's like, ah, that's hilarious. Fuck this. They will break into your phone, man. As I said that, a whole bunch of female heads in the audience started nodding up and down. Phone? Phone? Break into phone? A bunch of meerkats in the Serengeti. And guys, we gotta stop keeping embarrassing pictures on our phones. It's just gonna get us in trouble. I was at a birthday party for my wife. She's like, honey, go show dad that cute picture of us from Disney World. Okay, sir, I'm gonna hand you my phone right now, but do me a favor, don't scroll. <laughs> don't swipe left. Don't swipe right. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna hover this phone above your head like a military drone for a little bit. Get you in trouble, man. It'll get you every time. Trying to work out, trying to get in shape, having a younger wife. I tried P90X. Quickly found out that P stands for pain. X stands for extreme. 90 stands for how many seconds I can do without injuring myself. I tried yoga. I tried downward dog. I went down as Rin 1010, came up as old yeller. That sucked. Huh? I'm getting some wine. What's up? White people. <laughs> Did you guys know you can tell where somebody goes grocery shopping by what movie theater they go to? It's true. Totally scientific. If someone goes over here to the Angelica, Whole Foods. If someone goes over to Alamo Draft House, Trader Joe's. If someone goes to the AMC Theater in Irving, Fiesta. <laughs> Some lady got pissed at that. She's like, that's racist. I was like, well, bitch, you've never been to a fiesta. <laughs> Who's racist now? <laughs> uh, you guys are fun. Sometimes at comedy clubs, I don't do very well, so I go home and cut myself. I'm not cutting myself tonight. So I was fucking weird, wasn't it? It was a little dark. A little dark. I hate Facebook because all it does is constantly bombard you with how much better everybody else's lives are. 
Everyone on Facebook is like, look what I'm doing, look what I'm eating, look what I'm doing while I'm eating it. <laughs> Which is why it needs an algorithm to where if you post something really positive about your life, you should immediately have to post something really shitty. <laughs> at the exact same time. Hey guys, this is my son Skyler, captain of the football squad. He just got a full scholarship to Sportball University. Oh, and this is our daughter Alyssa, she's kind of a slut. <laughs> Pretty sure she does porn. <laughs> and not the good kind, the kind with no story arc or character development. <laughs> I tried watching porn with my wife, bad idea. All she did was criticize the actresses. <laughs> did she not know they were filming today? Why didn't she touch up her roots? Seriously? <laughs> Look at those tattoos, they're bleeding, they're fading. She needs to touch that shit up, I'm not watching this. <laughs> So I finally told her, I was like, listen, you, you pick a porn, why don't you do it? Man, that bad idea. She put on this weird, like, Asian fetish porn called Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> Ladies, you're into that shit, and that's weird. She has all two seasons on Blu-ray, doesn't she, bro? Look, honey, isn't it interesting? No. Turn that shit off. You guys ever play the uh, the porno name game, where you take the uh, your first pet as a kid in the street you live on? You have your porno name. Mine, Ginger Candlestick. It's kind of cool. It's, it's like kind of gender fluid. It can be a guy or a girl. What's your porno name? Gracie Waters. Gracie Waters. It's fucking hot. <laughs> I gotta be honest, my dick got hard a little bit. Like, 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 oh yeah. There's another game you can play where you can come up with your porno name for your porn star. Yes. It is your favorite movie as a kid and your favorite sexual position. Mine, Chitty Chitty Gangbang. <laughs> What's your porno name? Star Wars Reverse Cowboy. <laughs> I'm so jerking off to them. What was so funny is I came over here and he was like, oh no, uh uh, 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 whispering to her right now. You got a really horny, didn't you? You were just like, okay, we're doing a threesome with the comic after the show. It's gonna happen. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Let me okay, if we're doing a threesome, I got some rules for you, okay? No eye contact, okay? You're writing this down, okay? Don't touch me, okay? And if you want to change positions, the code word, Dragon Force. Dragon Force. It's happening. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be so great. Uh, it was fun. It's kind of weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. I apologize. So, 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 no, you just got you got so scared. It was okay. okay. We're cool. We're awesome. So I work at this. Uh, used to work at this place. I still do. I don't fucking know. And what they did is they installed motion sensing lights in the bathrooms, to where if you're in there for more than five minutes. and it detects no motion, the lights go out. What happened was they figured they started losing productivity because everyone was shitting on the clock. <laughs> Guys, there's an app out there you can track how much you make at work while shitting. <laughs> I made five grand last year. That shit's not taxable. <laughs> so what they did is they put these lights in our bathrooms, but they didn't tell anyone. Like they didn't send out a firm wide email like, hey guys, just so you know, if you're gonna drop a deuce, make sure you do it in under five minutes. <laughs> Lol. They just installed the lights and waited for the hilarity to ensue. So I'm in there doing my business on the clock. 
I'm gramming some instas. I like how the whispering is going around. Cramming from his Instagram, shut the fuck up. Just listen, he's about to do a shit joke, just shut up. He's old, he doesn't know how things work. So I'm in there, I'm on the Facebook, tweeting, I'm on BuzzFeed trying to figure out which Disney princess I'm gonna be. I'm hoping it's Pocahontas, but I know it's that bitch from Frozen again. And all of a sudden, I go past my five minutes, and the lights go out. And I start to panic. Because what if somebody comes in, they trigger the light, now I'm a creepy guy who takes a shit in the dark. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I got this, I got this. I put my foot under the door. Start whipping that around, it's not working. Start getting some momentum rolling back and forth in the shitter and hopping up. <laughs> nope, that's not working, okay. I start taking some toilet paper, rolling it up and tossing it out. I got the soap dispenser to work, that's kick ass. All of a sudden, somebody comes in, the light comes on. I'm like, fuck this, I pull my feet up. And I brace the door, because guys, he's coming at me hard, because I'm in the third stall scenario. And you guys know, third stall to the wall, that's the business making stall. The middle stall is the buffer zone stall. That's to keep stall one away from stall three. If you come in and you see someone in stall three, you don't come sit next to me, bro. Don't come sit next to me. I don't know why I'm yelling at you right now, man. But you look really fucking familiar, okay? And if someone's in stall one, you go to a different floor. That's just the American way, the Christian way, the proper way. Now, if you come in and you see that door is closed, you don't come in frantically and violently grab it and try to shake it open. No, you look for feet. Yeah. Oh, are there any feces down here? There's no feces. But this motherfucker, he did the weird creepy guy glance in between the crevice and we made eye contact. You just looked into my soul. Thank you guys so much. You've been David Jessup. You guys have been an awesome crowd. Thank you guys.